<laughs> and, and Private Eye, the, the, that ambition going back, as you said, sitting on the beach in Jeddah or wherever it might be, yeah. that, that came to fruition, but how? Well, um, it was in my last year at university, I ran a, a student magazine, um, largely so that I could interview my heroes. So I would write to them and say, can I do an interview for the magazine? Yes. Um, and I interviewed Peter Cook oh, yes. as a student who was the owner of Private Eye. And I had a, a wonderful lunch with Peter, which being a student, I didn't realize that lunch with Peter Cook didn't involve any food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, um, oh dear. Age, uh, oh. <laughs> age 20, I thought I can, I can have a few drinks with Peter Cook, you know, two, four, eight, ten double martinis. Um, and I couldn't. And um, the tape recorder um, uh, didn't record anything, and I made no notes. <laughs> and at the end of the meal, I had to be poured out the restaurant. And uh, Peter was so impressed by my professionalism <laughs> that he got me a job. <laughs> he is a, he's an extraordinary man, wasn't he? Much missed, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he was left a gap. Mm. Fantastic, Peter Cook. Yes. Um, he was the owner of Private Eye until he died, and he was, he was the man who, in big court cases, uh, used to sit at the back waving his checkbook at Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then he led, I mean, I, the high point of my um, I career was when Peter Cook led the raid on the Mirror Building. Oh, tell us about that. Oh. Funny, sorry. Well, it's sort of our equivalent to the guns of Navarone. Um, <laughs> Robert Maxwell, who spent his entire career suing me, um, and I spent mine being sued, um, he'd managed to get Private Eye taken off the newsstands mm. completely. Smiths wouldn't sell us. And um, he decided he would print a million copies of a magazine called Not Private Eye on the Mirror Presses. It's incredibly depressing. We had no problem. We were all sitting in the office. And Peter Cook said, he said, I bet they don't want to do this magazine. I'll send round a crate of whiskey. And I said, this isn't going to work, Peter. He said, trust me. He sent round a crate of whiskey. We rang an hour later. They were all drunk. <laughs> all the people putting together the dummy, drunk. Peter said, let's go down to the mirror and join them. I said, oh, yeah. We got in a taxi. Peter, myself, my secretary, two others, down to the mirror building. Um, said, we're going to Mr. Maxwell's office. Uh, the doorman said, yes, of course, Mr. Cook, up you go. <laughs> we went into Robert Maxwell's office. There were the three journalists putting it together, flat on the floor. <laughs> the dummy was in the middle. So I thought, fantastic, I stole the dummy. I said, let's go, Peter. He said, oh, no. He said, I haven't had half enough fun yet. He then, he then called the mirror catering department and ordered a crate of champagne for us. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> We were there with the champagne. I said, can we go, Peter? It's lovely. He said, why don't we get the mirror picture desk to take a picture of us drinking the champagne? <laughs> Very funny, Peter. We'll do that. Then we got crayons and wrote, hello, Captain Bob, all over the windows. <laughs> and then Peter rang him up in New York. Oh, that's right. I was in New York and said, guess where we are. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, the security burst in. Then, then security yeah. burst in yeah. and removed us. And removed you. But I, I, had, I had the dummy, so we went to Smith's, and it was very libelous. Maxwell had written on the front that I was a smelly homosexual who picked up men on Clapham Common. Good God. <laughs> I mean, Hampstead Heath, obviously. No, no, no. <laughs> joke, Nigel. Yes, joke. Yes, no, no. <laughs> So we, we told Smiths that if they were going to sell his, they had to sell ours. So we were back on the newsstand, and it was, it was Peter's great triumph. It was, and of course the Maxwell, the, 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 the part you played in his downfall was always a great triumph too for Private Eye. Well, ish. I mean, we, we spent sort of uh, 20 years saying he was a crook. Well, more than that, 30 yes, years saying did. he was a crook. Yeah. And it had no effect at all. He won every case he took <laughs> against us. Yes. And he sued just before he died, because Private Eye said he was stealing money from his own pension fund. Oh, oh can terrible. you imagine it? Oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, he died, so luckily we didn't get <laughs> beaten again. Was, was he the, 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 the bête noir? He was a long-term one. I mean, Geoffrey yes. Archer was slightly longer. It was, <laughs> I think, 40 years the Eye's been writing about Geoffrey, and finally he's inside. <laughs> <laughs> does, does he sum up all that you dislike, then? Is, is that the humbug? Yes. Vice, um, what was it, vice? Vice, folly and folly humbug. humbug. Mm. Um, and in Geoffrey's oh. case, a sort of supreme vanity yes. um, that meant he believed he should take centre stage in the country. Um, and he wouldn't be put off by the fact that he had no talent, ability or, <laughs> um, or moral character. 
there's a wonderful moment. I was tuned in, um, as you do, to, to um, that late night uh, discussion program uh, hosted by Mr. Dimbleby. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and you were on. And, and what I couldn't understand was that Mrs. Archer was, was on with you, or the Lady Archer was on with you. Uh, I, I couldn't understand why she would accept an invitation, which included you as well. Uh, but the result was spectacular television. Have a look at this. How does um, Garbage Gate compare to the sleaze which dog dogged the Conservative Party during the major years? How does Garbage Gate compare? Ian Hislop, you're the expert on these sort of things. <laughs> um, I think Garbage Gate's pretty good. Um, I think people have a memory of the, the major years sleaze being absolutely fantastic, you know, top-rate sleaze. Actually, a lot of it was pretty thin. Um, a lot of it was personal and a lot of it was sexual. Um, apart from, um, uh, you know, the three in a beds and the sort of the leg overs and all that, there wasn't a huge amount of um, straightforward financial sleaze. Um, there were liars, obviously, and um, there was perjurers. Uh, we had Jonathan Aitken and, um, and Jeffrey. Um, and, you know, that sleaze. Um, anything contentious like there? Let's take another free kick while you're at it. <laughs> well, th th this, is, um, this is a public program, um, and you've appeared on the panel. And I think you're most famous for being Jeffrey's wife. Your first comment, you mentioned Jeffrey as an orderly in the hope of diffusing the situation. Uh, which it won't. Um, <laughs> and uh, I feel perfectly entitled. The Prime Minister, his first response, when everyone says you're sleazy, he says, look at all the Tories, they're in jail. Your husband is the reason that Tony Blair gets away with it in Parliament. That I think we have to take into consideration. <laughs> And then you all went around to a dressing room and had a drink afterwards. Yeah, yeah she was she sweetless said, and light. She said, come home to Grantchester and see where Rupert Brooke once lived, yeah. did she? Yeah, come and have a pint and a pie. Mm. No, what, she didn't. What was it like, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's a touch frosty afterwards. Uh, <laughs> did you say anything? Did you speak at all? Sorry? Did you speak to each other at all? I'm just dying to know. <laughs> this is like real drama. <laughs> well, like, I, could, I, did I, she I, hit you or anything? No, she came okay. up and she was very, very angry. Very, well, like what? Like, like, angry. Okay. <laughs> like the director says, think angry. <laughs> right. um, I got that right. No, she was, um, she was furious, and she, I think no one has ever said boo to her. I mean, for 40 yeah. years, she's mm. been good-looking, rich, and well-connected, and no one has said, actually, um, you haven't behaved very well. I mean, I, I didn't bring up the, um, what the judge said in the second perjury trial about her evidence, mm. uh, but I have now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think you let her off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not for her. <laughs> did, did your father live in fear of private eye? No, he, actually, he loved it. Did he? Yeah, he, and <laughs> did it, was he? A, a, it was compulsory reading in our house, actually. <laughs> and he loved this. In those days, he used to have little sort of discs. They used to make these wonderful yeah. little uh, sort of L, um, e, um, 45s. Yeah. And they were fantastic. I wish you could start making those again. But it was the, the only thing he used to complain about was that it used to make his hands dirty because it was. <laughs> I'm afraid <laughs> cheap, cheap, cheap paper. Cheap yeah. paper. Yeah. But I'm afraid that's part of the deal, and it hasn't changed in all those years. Yeah, no, it's still just as cheap. Yeah. It's <laughs> but it's, I think it's. Uh, I, I'm not trying to flatter. Actually, I am. Because <laughs> I'm frightened he might say something nasty about no, me. No, no, but it's no. a fantastic. Mate, and, I mean, if you take away private eye, what else is there that does that job? It's really, That's you've got to have it. something like private eye. We should have a few more of them, for heaven's sake. Don't nope. you agree? He needs <laughs> private eye. <laughs> it's a good commercial. <laughs> and th that'll be about 200 pounds for saying private Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, finally, I mean, is there, a, is there a time, I suppose, there is when, when angry people um, mellow? Well, I'm hoping my next job, I want to edit hello. Are you... <laughs> I think all those pictures will be full of people with really terrible faces. Yes. <laughs> you know the ones that you don't want yeah, printed. Very really names, yeah. <laughs> no, I feel I, I could make it up after all those years. <laughs> Hot, uh, warming pictures oh, of people. Oh, we both to you, really. Ian Hislop, thank you very much indeed. Ian oh, Hislop. brilliant.